Animal Folk Tales of Britain and Ireland. From the horse's mouth. There once was a king who was kind as he was wise, and he was as wise as he was kind. His sons and his people loved him. One evening, his court and he was feast feasting, when he saw something glimmering on his food. Raising it on the tip of his knife, he held it towards the candle to see it better. The hair shone silver white in the golden light. Furious, the king ordered that the cook be brought before him immediately. All was silent as they waited for the cook to appear. It was so unusual for their king to display such a bad temper. The king sat there, his darkened face fixed on his plate. The hand that held the knife, with the silver hair still clinging to the blade, was trembling. The fearful cook came in silently into the hall. He stood beside the king, who did not notice him at first until he coughed gently to let him know that he was there. The king looked up into the face of the young man, and he saw that the cook had glossy black hair. It would be years before it turned grey, thought the king. The king had found one of his own hairs in his food. He had grown old without even noticing it. And then he said, They think me wise, and he chuckled and smiled to himself. Now that he knew he was approaching the winter of his life, he wondered which of his sons to leave his crown to. All of his sons were very clever men, so he decided to set them all to task. Bring me the least truthful thing in the land and bring me the most truthful thing in the land, said the old king. The elders went first. Before long, the king heard sounds of struggling outside of his chamber. Suddenly, the door was kicked open and the eldest prince burst into the room. Under one arm, squirming and protesting, was the official minister of the kingdom. Under his other arm, protesting and squirming, was the archbishop. The king looked at them and he began to laugh. He laughed and he laughed until he can barely speak. At least he could hardly hold his breath. After a while he managed to gasp. Very good, my son, very good. But which is which? And then the king fell into another torrid episode of laughter. The middle son went next. He was soon back and placed before his father a portrait and a mirror. The king looked at the image of himself as a young man in his prime. Then he looked at his reflection. He knew he didn't look like the picture anymore. 
But when he looked into the mirror, he knew he didn't feel as old as the old man that stared back at him. He looked from the portrait to the reflection and from the reflection to the portrait. Which was true? How he looked or how he felt? Then tears began to run down his cheeks as he said very sadly, Very good, son. My good son, very good. But which is which? And then he began to weep again. Then the younger son set off. He returned when the courtiers were all assembled for the evening meal. There was a gasp when they saw what he held in his hands. It was horrible to see. In one hand was a withered, blackened strip of flesh, and in the other was a raw, bleeding, still steaming tongue of a horse that he got from the butcher. Do not ask father, said the young prince, which is which. For it is easy to tell. In one hand, I hold a human tongue that I cut from a corpse hanging on the gibbet. Of all of God's creatures, man is the only one that can lie. Of all of God's creation, the human race is the least truthful. In my other hand, said the young prince, is the tongue of a horse, one whom we call a dumb beast. But, oh father, if we could but understand the language of the birds and the beast, how wise would we be? when we listen to those who cannot lie. When the youngest son ruled the kingdom with the old king's blessings, he was very wise. And he was wise enough to always have his brothers in his good company and good relations. The End